In this video, we are going to see about synchronous motor drive. Synchronous motor is an AC motor which will always run at synchronous speed. The synchronous speed is given by 120F by P where F is the supply frequency and P is the number of poles. So to change the synchronous speed, we need to change the supply frequency. Since P is the number of poles which is fixed, we have to change the supply frequency which is a difficult task. So normally synchronous motors were used for constant speed applications. But due to the improvement in power electronic converters, nowadays synchronous motors are preferred for variable speed applications also. So we will see the synchronous motor drive. So if you see the synchronous motor, it needs a AC voltage and this input voltage should be a variable voltage and variable frequency. So we can use a power electronic converter which can convert this fixed AC voltage and frequency into variable voltage and frequency. So you can use either rectifier and inverter combination. This rectifier will convert AC to control DC and this control DC will be given as the input for the inverter. So you can control the output of the inverter to control the speed of the synchronous motor. Then you can use a cyclo converter which is also called a frequency changer. So in cyclo converter the input frequency can be different from the output frequency. So by using power electronic converters we can achieve variable speed applications in case of synchronous motor drive. Let us see the features of the synchronous motor. First thing is that it will always run at synchronous speed. But it is not a self starting motor that is when you give the supply it will not start by its own. You have to start the motor and bring up to the synchronous speed so that stator and rotor will lock into synchronism after that. So some by some method we have to bring the motor to synchronous speed. The main advantage of uh, synchronous motor is that it can be operated under wide range of power factor. You can operate in both lagging and leading power factor. So cost, this is a power factor meter. It can power factor can be lagging or leading and it can be used for power factor correction. This is one of the major application of synchronous motor. The synchronous motor drive can operate at any power factor by controlling the field current. We can see here that it can operate at lagging power factor, leading power factor or at unity power factor. For unity and lagging power factor, the thyristors in the load side converter are force commutated. That is we have to do uh, go for some external circuit to commutate the thyristors. For leading power factor, normally the motor will be over excited. So machine voltages can be used to turn off the thyristor. That is load commutation is possible. So in such cases, the motor can supply the reactive power required by the inverter. So normally cyclo converter and current source convert inverters can be used for this purpose. Let us see the construction of synchronous motor. Like any other machine, it consists of a stator and rotor. The stator includes the armature winding for which we have to give the three-phase AC supply. When three-phase AC supply is given to the three-phase winding, a rotating magnetic field will be produced. But this synchronous motor is not self-starting. So normally, we will start the machine and bring it to the rated speed or synchronous speed. Then we have a rotor which has a field winding which has to be given the DC excitation. So when we give the DC excitation, the rotor 
which is uh, rotating at synchronous speed will get locked into the stator field. So, the interaction of the resultant MMF and the field MMF will produce the necessary torque to maintain the rotation. Let us see the speed control techniques of synchronous motor. So, the synchronous motor we know it will always run at synchronous speed which is given by 120 F by P. So, by changing the frequency speed can be controlled. So, for below base speed, see here it is the base speed. For below base speed, we can keep the V by F ratio constant and for above base speed, this voltage has reached its rated value. So, we cannot increase the voltage beyond this level because it will cause insulation damage. So, it is necessary to maintain the rated voltage while you increase the frequency. So, below rated frequency or rated speed V by F ratio will be constant and above base speed rated voltage and rate variable frequency is achieved. So, there are two types of speed control techniques. One is called open loop method. Another one is called self synchronous method or self controlled method. So, let us see in this video about the open loop method alone. In open loop method, as the name says, there is no feedback. We know about open loop method. When we give some input, it will produce some output. So, there is no feedback in the system. So, there is no feedback in open loop mode and here to change the frequency of the synchronous motor, our processes, we want to control the speed of the synchronous motor. So, to change that frequency, we have to use a independent oscillator. Second method is called self-controlled mode. So, in self-controlled or self-synchronous mode, there will be a feedback. That is, you will sense the rotor position and give it to as input to the circuit so that you will calculate the frequency according to the rotor position. So, the here an encoder may be used to sense the rotor position and the supply frequency is changed according to the rotor position. We will see the open loop mode of uh, speed control of synchronous motor. So, we know synchronous motor drive consists of two converters, a rectifier and an inverter. VSI refers to voltage source inverter and this inverter drives the synchronous motor. Here three motors are shown to show that this inverter is capable of driving many synchronous motors at the same speed. So, it has shown as uh, many motors are connected to the inverter. To control the speed of the synchronous motor, first we need to control the inverter output voltage as well as frequency. So, the inverter uh, voltage is controlled by varying the voltage applied to the inverter. That can be done by varying the firing angle of the rectifier. So, if you change the firing angle of the rectifier, the output of the rectifier will change which acts as the input for the inverter. To change the frequency of the uh, inverter, we have to give some frequency input that is given from an independent oscillator. Since this is an open loop mode, an independent oscillator will give you the frequency information for the inverter. So, at that particular voltage and frequency, the output will be produced which will drive the synchronous motors connected to it. So, here in the open loop mode, there is no feedback information. The frequency command is actually given through a delay circuit because as soon as the frequency changes, the machine cannot respond quickly. So, you have to delay the input so that the machine can um, be able to track the changes in frequency. 
Usually the frequency is gradually increased from its initial value to the desired value so that the difference between the synchronous speed and the rotor speed is usually small. And when this synchronous speed, desired synchronous speed is reached, the rotor will lock into synchronism. Now we have completed this part that the frequency part of the inverter. Now we will see how to change the firing angle alpha. So first we should know about the flux control circuit that is um, which we have studied already in induction motor. It is just the V by F method that is to keep the flux constant. We will keep the v, uh, v by F ratio constant. So below base speed we will keep the V by F ratio constant and above base speed the voltage will be kept constant and uh, only frequency will be changed. So this frequency which is uh, coming from the independent oscillator the same information is passed to the flux control which will determine the voltage here. So from that voltage we will determine what should be the value of alpha so that the inverter receives a particular voltage. But this open loop method causes spontaneous oscillation or hunting. So this hunting can be eliminated by using damper windings. So this open loop method is usually preferred in, in a particular application like it is able to drive many synchronous motor from the same inverter. So when we want to control speed of all these machines at the same time, it is better to use uh, this method. Uh, best application are textile and paper mills. So the points to remember here are synchronous motor will always run at synchronous speed and it is not a self-starting motor. So it has to be run at up to synchronous speed by some method. Synchronous motor can operate at any power factor by controlling the field current. So there are two types of speed control techniques. One is the open loop method or separate controlled method. Here an independent oscillator will determine the supply frequency. In self controlled method, uh, feedback information from the motor is used to generate the supply frequency value. So the supply frequency will be changed according to the rotor position. If you like the material, do subscribe to Read Electric Vehicle channel. Thank you.